Well, maybe let's start with cluster headache because for cluster headache, we have a more precise algorithm. Now, we'll underline that the first step is an appropriate diagnosis, which a lot of patients actually do not get for many years. The diagnostic delay for cluster headache uh, can be quite long, even if the patient these days go to the internet and they self-diagnose themselves. Some doctors will actually say they don't have cluster headache, even if they do. So uh, make sure that you understand the diagnostic criteria. If once you have diagnosed cluster headache, you want to differentiate episodic form from chronic form. So patients with episodic will have about so active periods and then in between periods they have remission so they are easier to treat usually the patients with a chronic they don't have remissions for more than three months um, and they are usually more difficult to manage the attack of cluster headache is a very difficult thing um, it is excruciating pain it can be extremely severe and it requires a fast active a fast action uh, acute treatment Triptans are the first line, but oral triptans in a pill form are too slow. So you need parenteral version, for example, a zomic nasal spray, zomitriptan, or sumatriptan injectable. Uh, other less commonly used versions are DHC, dehydroergotamine, subcutaneous. A very interesting treatment of the acute attack of cluster is uh, uh, inhaled oxygen. We don't know exactly why it works yet, but it is effective and extremely safe but it has to be administered at a high flow of 100% oxygen at 10 to 15 liters per minute with a non-rebreathing mask. Some of my patients have used a nasal cannula. This is probably useless. Um, and of course, oxygen can be combined with a lot of other things. So cluster headache will not respond, for example, to anti-inflammatories. Uh, of course, we recommend to avoid opioids because there are risks associated. Um, so those treatments are absolutely evidence-based. Um, unfortunately, in many countries, they are not necessarily accessible or covered. So uh, there's a lot of work to do to make those treatments uh, easily accessible to our patients. So preventive management of cluster, the, the idea is to either abort the period when it has started, so there's no more attacks or a few attacks, um, on or for cluster, chronic cluster headache is to decrease the uh, frequency of the attacks. There's It's very difficult to do research on cluster headache, therefore the evidence is quite limited, even for treatments that we use on a regular basis. The cornerstone of prevention for cluster is verapamil. Um, we don't know exactly why verapamil works so well for cluster, but it does help a lot of patients and it has to be increased sometimes to an average dose of 360 milligram in two to three times per day intake. Um, of course, side effects of calcium channel blockers may include hypotension, constipation and so on. So sometimes it's not tolerated, but that's the first step. After that, we have options with steroids. So either oral steroids that a lot of people have access to. Problem with steroids is you have to be careful about a rebound when you stop them uh, or the long-term side effects of steroids. But another more innovative approach that has actually good evidence is to inject suboccipital steroids just on the side of the attack um, at the back of the head. So it's very close to a greater occipital nerve block, but with steroids. Steroids, and that may effectively abort a period in both chronic and episodic cluster headache. Another new treatment that is a uh quite encouraging is a CGRP antibody called galcanizumab or amygality. And this is the very first treatment that has shown strong evidence in randomized control trial to uh, shorten and abort a per the period of uh, episodic cluster headache. Unfortunately, the trial in chronic cluster headache was not positive and therefore uh, it is not used uh, commonly apart by some expert where we actually will try anything. So that's another one. Once you have used those things, there are other molecules that are used with very small evidence and a poor tolerability, but still they are worth trying sometimes, such as the pyramid, and lithium. And then there's a very long list of things that people can try to stop chronic cluster headache from melatonin to vitamin D to testosterone shots. Um, but this is very uh, with very, very little or, or if any evidence. Uh, and so usually, we, but we will try everything to help those patients. So episodic cluster, we have quite a bit of options. Chronic cluster, less options. And sometimes uh, the key is to refer to a headache specialist for management, of course.